So Nancy, why is it important to do research on your mover before you move? As you'll hear later on in a video, uh, the moving industry is unregulated. So anyone can be a mover at any time and standards are real low. So during COVID, there was a real uptick. Uh, moving had been, moving scams have been around for a long, long time, but during COVID, it really got crazy because of just the sheer amount of people that were moving. And it became a real problem because it, it, seniors, students, new Canadians, they were all being targeted because they didn't understand the moving process very well. So these guys were very slick and knew how to knew how to wrangle in people and would make all these great promises with lower pricing and then show up, get all your things on their truck, and then they disappear. And then you get the phone call that said, oh, by the way, you owe us $10,000 more or mm -hmm. whatever. So it's been well documented. Uh, CBC has done four features on on their marketplace program on moving scams over the last 10 years or so, but especially in uh, two years ago, as you'll remember, uh, there was a big uh, two, two parter on, uh, on moving scams. And uh, eventually uh, the police were able to kind of catch up with one of the alleged scammers. And uh, you know, that's, that's in process right now in court. Wow. Well, yeah. um, this is timely that we're talking about this now, because certainly that we're getting into moving season. Uh, spring, I guess, is a big time for movers and a time people should be watching for this kind of thing. Absolutely. Uh, this is the time when uh, legitimate moving companies are getting their their books filled for the summer. Uh, not unlike hotels or airplanes or whatever, you know, you need to book early with them and they get filled up pretty quickly and then there's no more room. Uh, so it is a time and scammers are on, they know this. So they're, they're on the look right now to start uh, ramping up their services as well. Uh, and they're, uh, they have lots of uh, companies, like uh, they might have one company, but they'll have like five or six sort of pseudo companies. And, um, They'll they'll get that all in place and ready to go, so that if you're doing any online research, you'll come across your names pretty quickly. So it's uh, yeah, um, scamming season is starting. Yeah. What what are your what are your expectations? We haven't had as many complaints so far in the last year as mm. we had this time by this time last year when you and I talked. And uh, now that we're uh, in a different state of, of COVID. It's certainly not gone, but things are different. Do you expect it to be another high volume of these things this year? You know, I don't think it will be, Bill. Uh, we've certainly, think about two years ago when we started working on this program, uh, just how dire a situation it was with yeah. thousands of people being scammed on a regular basis. Uh, it, I think it's it slowed down. Last year, I really noticed a difference uh, in our phone lines and our inquiries, because before it used to be someone calling up and saying, "I they've got my my things, they want eight thousand dollars more. I don't have that kind of money. What am I supposed to do?" And of course, there was nothing anyone could do for that, uh, other than pay it up and get your stuff back, or just decide not to have it. Uh, but now the calls, especially over the last year, have been. Okay, I've been on your website and I've looked at Mover ABC. Now tell me about them. So we're getting a lot more of those calls. And we're also getting calls, I don't see Mover XYZ on your list. So are they legitimate? Are they like, tell me about the record if you have any. And uh, so people are paying attention and they're doing their research, which is really, really important. So I think the scamming combined with the marketplace um, exposure that's happened and the, the of course, the arrests that have been made in that world by uh, Toronto Police, I think that we're seeing a shift and scammers are going, there's other things we can do, you know, to scam people. So they've moved out of, it's, it's a little bit more of a problem for them to, to actually get away with it now. So I'm hoping that 
it's it's not going to be a bad season at all. I I really think that it, we're going to be in a better place this year. I guess that means though that uh, we have to be even more vigilant because the scammers that are still left doing it are probably very successful, so very mm. good at what they do uh, in terms of uh, uh, perpetrating their crimes on unsuspecting people. Absolutely. And when they change, they change your names quite regularly because so that they don't get caught by by the uh, police or followed by the, uh, you know, the, the authorities that are looking into these things these days. And so they're changing their names to be kind of close to legitimate moving companies. So uh, uh, and they're also turning around and saying, well, you know, if you go with a cam member, they're charging more. They must be scamming you because we're only charging you this much, you know. So it's it it they're craftier. The ones that are left are craftier, that's for sure. So so I'm 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 thinking of moving, or I know I'm going to have to uh, uh, move, or maybe you know somebody in my family is, and I'm watching this today, so I can give them good advice. What should we be looking for in a mover? Well, Karen and uh, her team out in Edmonton, plus a, a couple of our moving uh, member companies, uh, put together a wonderful video uh, that is all about researching your movers. And it's a great one. And I think we're gonna have a look at that right now, if you can tee that up, Bill. That's great to hear. I might just have it all ready for us to watch. <laughs> <laughs> Here it is. Moving is one of the most stressful times in a person's life. How do you find a good mover? As the moving industry is unregulated, meaning no government laws or rules to follow, it is prone to unscrupulous people setting up moving companies to rip people off. How do you know if you've had a good move? The moment of truth is when your items are loaded on the truck, the door closes and the truck drives away. As it is a buyer beware world, you can protect yourself by doing your research. Each move is unique, so there is no one size fits all rules, but there are some general guidelines. A good way to start is ads on Facebook, Kijiji, or the bulletin board. A better way is to talk to friends and family, ask at senior clubs and association for referrals. The best way? Are they members of CAM? Download our mover checklist to use as a tool as you work your way through doing your research. Members of the Better Business Bureau? Check to see if there's any disputes on file. Reviews. By doing a Google review search, you'll see their rating. But a word of caution, reviews can be fictitious and even bought. How long have they been in business? Do they have a physical location they work out of? A red flag would be if they'd use a mailbox or a residential home for their business address. When you're doing your Google research, Pay attention to how the ads are placed. Ads on the top of the page are pay-per-click, meaning they've paid to be there and are not necessarily a reflection of who is best. Choose three to five movers by looking at both the pay-per-click listings and the organic listings. Now it's time to do website reviews. Stock photos can be a red flag. Look for branded clothing and trucks in the website photos, even boxes. Do they have any tools to estimate your move? Now that you have narrowed down your list, you can email them using their Contact Us page. Do they respond promptly, professionally? It's best to prepare before you start making phone calls by making a list of all the larger items that you plan to move. Write down the dates for the move. Is there stairs, elevators, parking concerns? Now call the movers that you've selected. How do they answer the phone? Is it professional? Do they use the mover's name? A red flag sometimes is bad movers will operate under different names. A good mover will walk you through a list of questions to determine your move details. They will discuss rate structure, valuation coverage, when and how payment is due. A red flag will be if they don't accept credit cards and demand to be paid in cash. Another red flag will be if they want a deposit upfront for a local move. A good mover will come out to estimate or even do a video tour. The estimate will be in writing, sent by email or either in person. 
A good mover will discuss insurance. They will mention that they have WCB, a business license, and an HST or GST number. If the price is too good to be true, it's a red flag. Remember, good research is always your best move. Okay. So now that we've talked about movers and how to research them and what kind of red flags to look for so that you have a safe move, let's talk a bit more about the process because that's the fun part that scares everybody. So Karen and Lisa are both uh, fabulous move coordinators and uh, our CAM members and have been very helpful with us for this year's campaign. And we're going to talk about a lot of the things that uh, you're thinking about and maybe losing sleep about. So I think for me, I was I was a little surprised when, when we were talking about just all the reasons why an older Canadian might have to move or might want to move. So Karen, what kinds of things have you come across? Uh, usually some of the reasons we see are empty nesters. The kids have left, you know, they look around at this big house that they've lived in and raised their family in, and they've decided that it's just too much, too much space, too much work. They don't want to do the landscaping and the snow removal anymore. Um, sometimes they're doing it alone. They've lost their partner or their spouse, and that's even more daunting when they, they're looking around their place. And occasionally we also deal with people that have had health issues. So that uh, might have them looking at a place to move that uh, will give them our support. How about you, Lisa? What are some of your reasons? But definitely those would be my top three. Um, sometimes I see seniors that are just desiring a change. They want to live closer to their kids, which often requires a larger relocation, um, perhaps across the province or across the country and possibly even overseas. It could just be a choice. Wow. And I know yep. in, in my personal world, my parents lived in a four level split and they were in their eighties. And it was, it was us who said no more because we were terrified of them falling and falling down the stairs and neither one being able to help the other one out. So the, you know, the first step in our, in our journey was to get them into a one level home. So that's right. another, another thing that I, I, I know just from my own personal experience. Yeah, so, absolutely. And we talked about, you mentioned long distance moves, uh, Lisa, and both Lisa and I have been movers and have been in homes helping folks move. Uh, you're more, much more uh, detailed now than you would have been probably as a move, for, uh, like a, a move organizer for your moving company. But so what are some of the other kinds of moves because there certainly is a variety of of them out there mm -hmm. um, well probably the most common is moving intercity let's say you're moving to uh, an adult community or or a retirement community 50 plus 60 plus um, those are fairly fairly straightforward um, I am looking after many interprovincial type moves too or maybe you want to go back home to Nova Scotia or Newfoundland many people still moving to BC and then that brings us into the United States as well I have moved people into the United States mainly to be with family members or they just want to go back home where they're familiar and whatnot and I did send a couple over to Hungary wow. and they were yeah and they were still in their 90s and they said that's it we wow. want to spend our final wow. days at home. at home so you could literally move anywhere in the world it's just what what what's going to be best for you absolutely what's your next and, chapter and if you're still driving you know there's we can help out with moving cars or your campers or whatever if you if you want to yeah. fly down because you know there's a lot of snowbirds that they'd rather be in Florida or Arizona because it's a lot nicer than that's right. what we've been going through this winter <laughs> across the country. That's for sure. For and, sure. Yeah. And Karen, having been in the storage industry, there's all sorts of different storage options as well. 
There is actually. Um, uh, with 30 years in the self storage industry, that's what comes to mind for me first. And what we'd often see is people would hire movers to help them put those items in self storage, even though they wanted access to them. So when I have conversations about storage with my clients, we kind of go through all the different types of storage and there's pros and cons of both. So there's self storage where they'd have access that the movers can certainly help put it in there. And then the movers themselves provide storage. So if they're going to somewhere that they plan to be for a while, maybe the mover putting things in storage is the best. And that could be in a warehouse that's heated and climate controlled and put up in the ceiling in big uh, vaults. And the other option would be the container storage. We've used that with some success, success as well. And uh, that works really well. In my local area, my mover actually has containers as well as warehouse storage. One of the things that happened uh, in, in one of my moves is um, the house had to be refitted uh, to make room for, it was a, it was a, it was a one level house, but it had to be refit, refitted, that's a word, isn't it, um, for wider doorways and things like that. So what we did was the, the customer rented like a, like a pod or a, a moving box or whatever and had it on their driveway. And our fellows went in and moved everything into that, um, you know, driveway container while the house was being renovated. And then they moved everything back in and situated it in, uh, you know, reconfigured it based on what the new rooms were like, because they, they tore down walls and things like that. So there's all sorts of things. And there's all sorts of options that we can help out with, because um, one of my favorite sayings is their moves are like snowflakes. That no, no one is alike with another. So, uh, yeah. All right. For sure. That's overwhelming. No wonder people call us and go, I don't need even know where to start. Yeah. So what are some of the things people can do to prepare for a move? And I think it's really important to mention at this time, one thing I've learned with you two lovely ladies is you want to be proactive and not reactive. So maybe you want to talk a little bit about how you can prepare and maybe talking about the benefits of being a little bit more proactive. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, okay. um, Everybody's jumping in here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know because we have so much to say. Here. We have so much to say. Um, I'll go ahead then if that's okay. Yeah, um, sure. I think Probably the most important thing I could recommend to anybody that's with us is to start planning so that when the time comes and it could be unexpectedly, you know, you have a plan in place and you're still in control. If somebody falls and gets injured and things, decisions are going to be made for you. So starting with the, starting with the plan is deciding what you want to do and possibly when. You know, do you want to be in a condo? Do you want to be here? Do you want to move across the country? Just deciding now while you're still in control, I think is the number one key. Then you're more proactive in handling the future. Number one tip. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I would find, I would, I would concur, Miss Lisa. Um, I also say it's time to look around your home and see how you're using your home. Uh, a lot of my clients hardly go in the basement. So those are things that they could start looking at and going, what am I gonna do with all that stuff? So I always say, first of all, are your kids still storing stuff at home? That's the cheapest storage yet, let me tell you. <laughs> so maybe that's a conversation you need to have that you know the kids can come and get their stuff up so you don't have it there to worry about. And then you can start looking at the possibility of selling items, donating items, possibly there's things that you're keeping that you know they don't work or they're too badly damaged and nobody would want them. So do some disposal, start small, but just start. I agree with you, you know, just look around and see how you're using your home and what rooms that are you really often in? You know, if you're always in your kitchen and you're always in your great room in a certain recliner in a certain area, that's your core area of your house. Would you agree? Yes, Absolutely. And, to, and to just recognize it, I think is a, is a really good step. One, of the, one of the things, yeah, one of the things that I noticed when my dad passed a couple of years ago, mom and I had the conversation. I mean, she's 90 or she was 89 at the time about, okay, mom, what are we doing here? And she said, 
I am not ready to give up my things because that means that my life is coming to an end. And that really hit me until she suddenly mm -hmm. passed away unexpectedly. And then we went into the garage, which we avoided like the plague. And there's 40, 50, 60 years of accumulation of this Mount Everest of stuff. And it puts so much pressure on my brother and I that we, it didn't cause a family rift, but we were so exhausted and so, and we were cranky at each other. And it wasn't, you know, so it was, it was undue pressure on us. And I have a feeling that if my mom had known that, she would have, she would have regretted not having dealt with some things when my dad had passed. She was fortunate. She got to stay in her home till, until she passed away. And she was lucky. Um, and she didn't have to downsize and, and move somewhere else. Uh, but that's something else that you kind of have to think a little bit about. It's not, it's not a fun topic to talk with your kids about, but, uh, definitely find out what they want because guess what? They, we'll have a, we're going to, during question and answers, why you're going to, you're going to be talking to us and asking us, what do we do with this? What do we do with this? Because the kids, kids are not, it's a very disposable society now. Don't you find? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. I would say too, you made a good point, Nancy, that it's one of the kindest things you can do for your family and friends is to start and not leave them that big, overwhelming job. Um, it's time to have conversations. You know, maybe your grandkids would love to have something from your home and they've always admired your their favorite bowl that you use every year at Christmas. Or maybe they really would love a piece of furniture that's in your home and it's a wonderful keepsake for them. And they're starting out their homes. So sometimes having the tools from the garage or a lawnmower, those are conversations that can start and start earlier versus later. Lisa? Absolutely. Yes, and that, that brings me right back to having a plan. Yep. So we have uh, a lady that made the decision to move into a retirement home, and she invited all her friends and family in, okay, to take whatever they wanted after she made her selection. She's still in control. <laughs> yep. And I think that either you make the decisions ahead of time as part of your plan, or somebody is going to have to make it for you. And so that was really just the strong message that I wanted to send. And people probably aren't thinking about, I know with my parents, they're not thinking about what happens after they're gone. They're not imagining my brothers and I, you know, picking away at it. And so that's a, a vital point. What's going to happen? Absolutely. Yep. 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 And Proactive, and reactive. Yep. And yep. In, our, in our case, we, we were going to a city that we had no idea who the charities were. We had no idea where the dumpster was. We had no idea where to go to do recycling or what their recycling program was. It was it was a lot. So yeah, that's it where we is come a in. Fantastic segue, <laughs> ladies. Oh, we have two phenomenal move coordinators with us, and yeah. I just want to let you guys go at it here. So you're a blessing for a lot of people. And so what kinds of things can you do to help a family be less stressed and more organized with their move? Karen, for me, I would say it's resources. You know, I've been at this now about six years. Um, I've lived in Edmonton for almost 40 years, although I'm only like, you know, I was four when I moved here. But um, <laughs> to know you made some good points, you know, coming in from out of town and having to find someone that can do junk removal, where can donations be taken? How do you sell things in this market? You know, just even getting a move out cleaner in to do work, having handyman work done at the house to get it ready for sale. Those are things that we absolutely can help with. And I'd like to say, too, we're also great experts on moving and storage. So we can come in and help with that actual move where it, it is daunting. It's a lot of work. It can be very physical. And uh, we've got young, strong bodies and we can do that and help out. Lisa? Yeah. And I think I think that a lot of people aren't aware that these services are available, right? And and at least for my company, we do pre-listing preparation. So we start off with a an initial editing 
of the home and we start to work with what's important and what you want to bring and sometimes that goes to storage and sometimes it's the beginning of the donation oh and what does Jack want in Montreal, you know, and then we are there to do the full packing, whether it's going to the retirement home or packing up items for donation, the move itself. And most importantly, I think, is the unpack and the new home setup. People don't realize that there's people out there that can recreate your space as much as possible and make you feel at home even faster. Because most moving companies... In fact, none of them do a put away service, which is why we step in and do that. Everything goes away into cupboards thoughtfully. We make the bed. We make sure that, you know, and we're, there's nothing actually that I wouldn't do to make my client most comfortable. So there's, there's a whole series of things and, and services available to you and we know where to go and how to do it. So, and it's our pleasure to think this is what we do. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, I love it. We actually it. can make moving fun. I, I say that to my clients. You know, I know it's stressful, but we might actually have some fun doing this. So uh, I agree. I think that it's just so powerful when you get all those things onto the truck. The truck arrives, all these boxes, everything's coming in to smaller spaces. So they fill up with boxes pretty quick. But to see those boxes unpacked and put away and taken away, we take away, I'm sure you do, to the packing materials mm -hmm. and the boxes and all that clutter. So it's safer for our clients. There's no tripping hazards. We're not going to leave them with a bunch of boxes that they have to maneuver around. That very first night, they're staying there in their space. Their kitchen is unpacked, their shower curtains hanging, their bed is made, their lamps are together, their TV is working, the clothes are hanging in the closet, the bathroom is set up. It's a beautiful thing, like it's super powerful. It's like a wonderful reveal on move day, on a very busy, hectic day to actually accomplish that. It's wonderful. And the yeah. wonderful thing for someone is that when you go to their home to start the process, they can sit there with a cup of tea. They can continue to talk to you. They can tell you stories about this, you know, bird that they got in Tijuana on a trip in 1940 <laughs> or whatever, you know, but they can just sit and relax and tell you the stories. I always loved hearing stories about antiques and different knickknacks and things like that. And mm -hmm. that's all, that's the joy of, of the job, right? And truly is. I, I'm not yeah. having done your end of it, but being on a mover side, that was one, that's the thing. We, as a mover, we can't, due to liability issues uh, with our insurance, uh, we're not allowed to take pictures off of walls or take nails out of walls or put put things up like put a tv up or or any of that kind of thing so it's it's out of our scope and this is where it's perfect for you to come in because there's nothing worse than moving and going you're, you're just sitting there in a puddle you're just so overwhelmed because you've got all this mass around you that you you know, that's there. Yeah. Uh, one thing yeah. I wanted to mention is when we were talking ages and ages ago, you were talking about how Karen, how I think it was Karen, that you took pictures of the closet so that you could recreate mm -hmm. the clothing basically in order. Um, yes. That That's so cool. That's not something that a family member would think about doing because, you know, you're trying to find your favorite you're going to Hawaiian night three days from now at your new retirement village. And where's your Hawaiian shirt? You have no idea. So that, that's cool, right? right? Yeah. Very it's cool. also a very helpful um, factor if someone has the start of dementia. So we'll mm -hmm. try to take uh, pictures of the top of their dresser tops or their, their nightstand or even their medicine cabinet and put things away so that they're familiar. Now everything is not a perfect recreation sometimes, medicine cabinets and such. But, well, you sure can get close. The other thing I'd add, too, that we can do for people that the movers usually don't do is we move uh, plants. We can help them move their food from the fridge and the freezer. And uh, we talk about pets. We talk a lot about pets because we're real pet lovers. And we want to make sure that's a good experience for them, too, that they're going to have as least stress as possible. The pets do pick up on the energy, but also to have them arrive safely. Because that's a big part of our clients' world is 
is that pet being also well taken care of? What are some things you do, Lisa, for those areas? Yeah, I I actually help move the pets and I've even actually adopted some pets. <laughs> <laughs> um just because you I'm know, not when allowed. You're moving... <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm at my max. Yeah. Um I have adopted some pets from people that moved out of the country because they couldn't take them. Sure. So that's that's how big my heart is with pets. Um the recreation, the photos, Karen, I actually take pictures of all the cupboards all the furniture layout and we try to recreate it as much as possible. We label the furniture in the existing home as to where it's going into the new home. We bring coolers to empty the fridge and freezer. And we, and we mark the, sorry, but this no, was a, this is kind of a new one is because we make the bed or beds on moving day, we want you sleeping that night comfortably is we mark the box with our pink duct tape. So everybody is looking for that box and it's the first thing that we do. So we take every measure and every step possible to make it as smooth and streamlined as possible. Uh, yes. and, and you don't just work with the, the client in the home. If, if a family member is invested in being um, involved in it, you also are, you keep in touch with them, obviously. And yeah, and, uh, so that the family oh, absolutely. is sure about everything that's happening and that, that it yes. is a safe move yeah so i think the power of our service became even more um impactful during covid um i sat at home and went oh wow i'm gonna sit at home and i won't be able to move any seniors because the world is shutting down and seniors are vulnerable moving still happened as we all know mm. uh, with lots of different controls in place but uh, we had family members stuck in different cities who couldn't come home to help their, their parent and their loved one. And that was powerful to be able to work with them and hear what their concerns were and, and to be, you know, yes. the body, on the, the feet on the ground, if you will, to mm -hmm. have that move done with their loved one was just, I was actually called an angel and a whisperer. Not only was I a senior whisperer, <laughs> one of my reviews says I was a, an adult child whisperer because there's a few times that, you know, I almost had to talk the daughter off the ledge because she felt so guilty. She couldn't be here. And it's still the move had to happen. And mm -hmm. so, you know, the average person moves, you know, I mean, there's, there's stats out all over the place that it's every seven years or whatever like that. But older Canadians, older folks all around the world don't move every seven years and they've accumulated. It's such an emotional it, it, it It's just so emotional. The whole, the whole process, because it's, you know, 40, 50, 60 years of accumulation, 70, 80 years of a life with someone else, perhaps. And to have to make that into, you know, 30 boxes and, and seven pieces of furniture that you take, it, it, you get invested and you're like, I used to, I would cry at, at moves, you know, because I just get so invested in what is you know what is important to the to this client of mine and i i can imagine you folks because you're in the house for so many days that it's it's just you must like you must have these incredible bonds with people right and these great stories and yeah i'm gonna cry just Absolutely. thinking about I it know, we're all <laughs> um but as as my manager says there's no crying and moving yeah. So, but and don't Karen, cry I don't in know. baseball yeah. <laughs> or movie. Um, I, I, Karen, I'm positive you're the same. When I even from the initial free consultation, that is my time to get to know them, and I've adopted almost every one that I have moved, and I just treat them as if they're my own parents, and we are we are right into the thick of it. And we, we've picked them up off the floor and we've had to do whatever it takes. We've changed the, whatever, whatever yeah. is yeah. needed. Yeah. yeah. But this is, and every move is so different and so challenging that it's my, it's my mission to make it as seamless as possible. And, you know, we're succeeding. We're available yeah. in every Absolutely. city. Yeah. I imagine, Karen, there's probably people like us. Absolutely. I believe so. We've got uh, members of NASM throughout uh, Canada. That's the National Association of Senior Move Managers. 
We have professional organizers that I'm also a member of throughout Canada. You make a good point. No, not or, all organizers or move specialists like we are, but they certainly have a skill set that they can come in and help even just yeah. parts of the job, right? Yeah. Um, and I guess I, you've mentioned that you've, what how this rewarding for you. When I left the storage industry, my why was I didn't want people to hire these crappy movers that took advantage of them. And that's why we're working with Cam and with Nancy so that we don't have these rogue you know, movers out there taking advantage of a very vulnerable population who haven't moved for 30, 40, 50, 60. My record is 72 years. Um, so they didn't know where to start. And that's what I bring to the table too. And I'm sure you do too with our backgrounds is that we find the good movers and we work closely with them and we can guarantee a great experience. And it's all up front. We talk about costs. We talk about how this all works. There's no surprises. Mm -hmm. Unless yeah, uh, the yeah. pet turtle that they didn't tell you about, you find it hidden in a closet because <laughs> they were nervous to let you know. <laughs> the pet story. turtle. Anyway, guess who adopted well, the pet turtle? <laughs> well, I so, had two rabbits. <laughs> oh, well, there you go. So before we get on to a really great video that uh, Lisa, some of Lisa's clients were uh, very wonderful to consent to letting Lisa uh, chat with them a little bit about their moves. Uh, is there any last words, ladies, before we uh, head to that? And then we're going to watch that video. I'm going to wrap up with Bill. And For me, it's do your research. It yeah. yeah, do your research, not just with your mover, but also with your move coordinator relocation specialist, organizer, whoever it is. Um, just like the moving industry, we also have no barriers to entry. So anybody with a cape gun and a bundle of boxes can say they do what we do. Um, but we take it very serious. And we do have insurance. We do have WCB. We do have GST or HST. You know, the same sort of checklist for the movers can also help you hire our professions as well. And uh, it's, again, buyer beware. You know, we want you to have a good experience, especially because we are a new industry. So do your research, everybody. Yeah, for sure. I agree completely. And to know that you don't have to do this alone. You can, they don't have to get the full package either, right, Karen? They could just, if there's right. just specific things that they need to have done, there's always help available to you, the people that know what they're doing. And sometimes it's better to just trust the experts. 100%. Yeah. And, and the mover are, are movers. Some have packing services and unpacking services, but they don't have the full meal deal. They work with you. I mean, how many, I, I was surprised at some of the connections that you had with some of the mover members and that's wonderful. So it, it we're the three of us and our community are here to help. And the whole idea of, being with CARP and having and having CARP be so supportive and and interested in this is that your safety is important and I think that's what is one of the biggest elements that we want is for you to be we want you to have a smile on your face and because there is no crying and moving so as Lisa has said <laughs> so, anyway um Here's the video, and uh, we hope you enjoy it. And after the video, we'll we'll be back for a, a brief wrap up, and then we are opening it up. So get your questions ready because we know you have some. Uh, that was really interesting and certainly informative. And uh, as we mentioned uh, earlier, and people who watch our uh, CARP and CAM webinars regularly know that these webinars are recorded. They go up online. There'll be links from our web pages, from our Facebook pages, everywhere that we communicate our newsletters. So uh, if you want to show this uh, to anyone else, you'll be getting a link because you registered for this event and you'll be able to watch that again. A lot of really good information uh, there. So in the video, they mentioned the best thing you could do is contact CAM, the Canadian Association of uh, Movers. So uh, what uh, can you tell us about how they help people? How you, in fact, Nancy, is their, their <laughs> president and CEO. How do you help people who are moving through CAM? 
Well, you know, we've put a lot of effort into having public information available, easily accessible, and we get feedback that our website is just full of all sorts of great things uh, from the uh, regular kind of questions right through to very unique things like how do I move my wine collection and how does my Ooh, pet move and that kind of thing. So uh, we'd have to get a wine collection in order to do that, Bill, but that's a whole other story. <laughs> so we have lots of information on our website. Uh, we've put together a section uh, specifically for moving seniors because it's, you know, there's so many intricacies to uh a situation with a senior, especially, you know, when they're, you've been living in a home for decades or your family has to help or there's you've become incapacitated, whatever the reason is. And so we've got lots of information on that uh, website and we will have a link to our website. Uh, and I'll also put it in the chat for you to, to get to it. But there's tip sheets there. All of our videos are there, including the ones that you're seeing today. Uh, we've got checklists um, for like a work back checklist. Uh, six months from now, I'm moving. What do I need to do? That kind of thing. Um, and as well, the uh, mover checklist that Karen talks about, we've put that in. And we are also probably our main role is to provide you with the list of movers across the country that are certified as professional. They follow a code of ethics. We keep our eyes on them, and they're all legitimate, uh, fabulous companies, and they, they're they the ones that you should really seriously have a look at. And so we, you can either search by your postal code, or you can bring names to us. You can call us, and we'll help you out. And of course, then uh, we also help out if you're really stuck on a situation and you're trying to understand what you do with something, we can certainly help you out with that as well. What, what if, even though I've done the research, checked my community, I just don't seem to be able to find a mover who uh, is available to move me. Can I call your office? Will you help us try to find a mover? Yes, absolutely. Uh, what we do is, you know, because I mean, uh, there's a finite labor crisis like everywhere else so you know there's not as many movers around these days uh and so they're they're full they're busy and they're, you know the housing market is uh, picking up so people are starting to move a lot again and so yeah you can call us and uh or email and we'll get on that for you and uh give you some help with uh finding some folks good all right excellent uh, now that we've talked about the movers, um, let's talk about the process. Uh, and, and joining us this year are two uh, young ladies who have uh, prepared some information for us. Nancy, can you tell us a little bit more about them and what they're going to tell us? Yes. Yeah, so Lisa and Karen, who are right here and you can meet them, uh, they are uh, move coordinators. Uh, both have a history in some form of the moving industry in their past and they now specialize in, in seniors moving and helping out folks because it is quite a daunting task and uh, they're going to uh, answer a bunch of questions and uh, we have another video as well good okay let's uh, let's take a look at it What made you decide that it was time to, to relocate? Well, I had two things happen. I've, I've, I've had moved by choice once in the last two years, but the first move was by circumstance. You know, my husband had a stroke almost exactly two years ago. Yeah. And uh, eventually was determined he would not be able to come home. So we moved from a rural subdivision in Alberta into Edmonton where we could both be together. Mm -hmm. But uh, although I used the service at the time, um, because he re-entered hospital, I wound up 
moving more than what I needed. So right. I downsized once, sort of. Sort and of. then um, this, in the past year, I made the decision that I needed to move to a smaller place. And at the same time, made the decision that the smaller place should be closer to family. And I have a daughter and granddaughters in Ottawa. So, okay, I made the move come here. You did. How did you how did you emotionally handle letting go of some of the furniture that wasn't never, from I was never emotionally attached to it. Okay. Except one person. Right. One, two a person and kids. But I I didn't. Well, there were the things that I wanted to keep wedding out. Right. Okay. And, you know, personal things. But emotionally furniture? Do you remember what we did with your excess furniture? There was yeah. that nice couch. Yeah, we you said you gave it to the Ukrainians. We gave it to the Ukrainians. Yeah. It went off of the moving truck and into their truck. Yeah. It didn't even go into the building. Yeah. So that must have made you feel good. Oh, it did. Yeah. yeah. Yes. But I, I, I got our, our, all the things I really wanted were our paintings. And, and, and every one of them. And, and the souvenirs that I might have had. Those are things. Furniture, I do want enough to furnish the, the right. unit here at well. In fact, you bought a new bed, I think. I had to. You had to. Uh, well, the bed that I had in the condo was a king size. Too big. And it would have filled the whole bedroom. Not only that, but I was, I moved out here as soon as I went back, I said, I'm, and put it up for sale. But I'm not staying here another night. Yeah. I'm not staying here while it's up for sale and I have to make the bed and get out or pick up. I said, I'm moving out. Moving so out. Um, um, I bought a bed. Loud. At State Country, yeah. Lynn brought a chair and my television over and I moved in. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Paige, tell me, what are some of the advantages for seniors moving to a retirement community? Great question, Lisa. Um, retirement living is where you come to have fun, make friends, uh, be active, reduce stress, um, be a part of a community where you can call home. Yeah. Some of the benefits of moving into a retirement residence be that um, with special care or just independent living is a huge one is social um, connections with others, especially after we've been through COVID. Um, oftentimes a senior might be living on their own, um, perhaps spouse has passed or kids may live out of town. And so isolation is uh, really terrible and um, moving into a place where you've got friends, there's activities to do, um, and it can be really scary. I mean, it, I joke about this because, you know, when you're going into high school, you have the same sort of concerns, right? Like, are people going to be friendly? Who am I going to sit with for lunch? But it's the same thing, no matter what age you are. So I think that's one aspect of moving into a retirement residence adult um, community is socialization is really important. If you could give any advice to another senior that's about to embark on mm -hmm. a relocation, what would it be? I think it's it's really important to make sure that you um, know it's not not just why you want to move, but to make sure that you've chosen a good place to move to, and that you then have somebody who can help you, because it's a big effort to suddenly go from a big house, and a, you know, on a property, mm -hmm. and, and for anybody, no matter where you are, to suddenly moving. Um, for sure, just to a different place. Is to move. When you first say that, don't say, oh, well, I'm managing, okay, now I'll just wait, you know. Do it I while can. you can. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Try a number of places. Right. And, uh, you know, visit a number of places. One that you think you could live in. Go for a, a temporary stay. Yeah. That's great advice. Yeah.